So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, my name is Laura Nelson. I'm with Signpost. And today we are talking with IWCA members about Google tips and email marketing best practices. You've got a lot of information for 30 minutes. So I hope this is valuable. And certainly I wanna give you an opportunity at the end to ask questions as well. So who is Signpost? Well, we are a tech company. We're excited to be a new associate member of IWCA. As I mentioned before, my name is Laura Nelson. I'm with Signpost. I've been a marketer for many years and worked in the tech space for many years as well. And I'm excited to bring these topics to you. We'll have some time at the end for Q&A, but before then, we'll dive into these topics. As just a housekeeping note as well, we are recording this session and we will send it to everyone who registered for the webinar today. So let's get going. So today's agenda, we're gonna talk about how your business can stand out on Google first and foremost. Then we'll talk a little bit about reviews, why they're important and how you can get homeowners to write them for your business. Then we'll shift gears to email marketing. This is an important tool in your toolkit to drive more loyalty with the customers that you already have. Then finally, as I mentioned, we'll take some questions at the end if you have them. So let's move on with your agenda because we've got a tight 30 minutes. To touch on Google first. We spend a lot of time talking about Google because it is so important to building out your business's online presence. The reason for that is this stat alone. The majority of people are using search engines like Google, the most popular search engine, to find local information. And a big part of that local information is businesses like yours that can solve their problems. So what does that look like? We're all familiar with this, whether we're searching on a mobile device or on our desktop computer, we find this screen. However, there's a couple of different ways that we'll use Google. If we don't know who we're going to hire, we might do this kind of search. I call this a category search. So if I'm in Lafayette, Colorado, which I happen to be, and I have a need for window cleaning in my community, this is what that search might look like. When you do a category search, you get results kind of like this. This is the Google three pack. You might see some ads above this, and certainly you're going to see some organic search links below this. But because Google's user interface is so black and white, your eye naturally goes to this map. Really the only area where there's color on the page, right? We're presented with three choices that Google is telling us are most relevant for that local search. Your eyes are really drawn to which of these choices has the most star reviews, right? The highest ratings and the most reviews. If you can look at this search, you see a couple of things that jump out. A guy and a gal, 4.4, 27 ratings. A blue in, window cleaning, wow. Five stars, 22 ratings, followed by Dutch Shine. Good ratings, but only two reviews. So if I'm a consumer, which many of us are for all sorts of products and services in our lives, you know, our eyes are really going to go to those top two choices. You know, that's what that category search looks like. However, a lot of you guys tell me you do a lot of word of mouth, you get a lot of referrals. In that event, someone's still going to need to go to Google to learn more about you and learn how to get in touch with you. you know, they'll do this type of search, which we call a Google name search, and they'll land on your listing. That's that real estate on your, the right-hand side. Now, this is a free listing provided by Google 
that provides that searcher, searcher <laughs> with all the information they need to know about what you do and where. I'm gonna focus in on this for the first part of today because if you do not have your Google My Business listing optimized, you're gonna miss out on an opportunity to convert action. What do I mean by conversions? I mean clicks to your website, I mean calls, I mean scheduled appointments for your services. So let's dive into the critical parts of optimizing your Google listing. I'm gonna start from the top and work my way to the bottom. First, as part of your Google listing, you wanna add photos of your great work. This just helps to professionalize your listing and show off your great work. Second, link to your website. I hope that you all have a website, but if you don't, this is a critical part of building out your business's online presence, super important. Third, Google reviews, critical. I mean, we saw how important they were, especially when someone doesn't know who they're going to hire. It's super important to get people to write their referrals and spread that good word of mouth about your business online. And we'll, a little bit later, we'll talk about how you can drive more of those reviews. Next is online estimates. I think this is really interesting because this is a new feature for Google. Uh, you can actually offer video appointments through your Google listing. If you check out the signpost blog, I wrote an article about this a couple of weeks ago, and this is a free feature that can help you draw in more appointments. So I highly recommend you check that out. Next, hours. Got to set that right expectation on when you are available and when homeowners can reach you. Of course, your phone number has to be right. So I'm gonna take that along with your address or your service area as a given. Another feature that's worth calling out here is appointments. If you have a booking link where homeowners can schedule with you directly for an estimate or one of their regular services, um, you can drop that link right into your Google listing. Take out the friction of the phone call the back and forth and let them connect with you directly. Then finally, critical piece are your reviews from the web. So Google reviews, super important in that, in that initial search, but it's also important to ensure that you're looking good on some of these other sites like Home Advisor, like Angie's List, Yelp, Facebook, et cetera. Again, these are the critical pieces of optimizing your Google My Business listing and a really important part of building your foundation online. I'm gonna dive into the reviews a little bit because they are super important for homeowners when they're evaluating whether to call you and hire you for a job. A lot of people spend time reading reviews and guess what? The majority will spend this time to read the reviews. What's more though, that 10 people read 10 reviews before trusting a business. So keep that in mind. You know, think about that third choice we looked at, five reviews. Mm, doesn't look like a very established business. And the data proves out that you've got to have more than a handful to actually build trust among prospective customers. So this study by Broit Local talks about 10 being a critical point for you. Of course, how many to get overall, that's really gonna depend on your market, right? But I hope you're starting as, with 10 as a baseline and building from there. So I mentioned earlier, Google My Business, like super critical to establishing your business's online presence. And here's why. You know, what you want homeowners to do next is some sort of action, right? You're hoping to drive a conversion. I thought this study was particularly interesting in showing what is actually going to move the needle here. So, in the example, pointed out some of these factors. 
And every year, um, this company, White Spark, has actually taken over us for us uh, another company called Moz, but they do a deep dive into the Google algorithm. And although Google doesn't share every detail with us, they have found what moves the needle the most in terms of driving that next conversion or that next step by the homeowner when they see your Google My Business listing. It's no surprise what's most important, right? People prioritize that Google rating. And second, they're looking for positive sentiment, right? What's interesting and important to keep in mind though is third, they're looking at the quantity of your Google reviews too with text. So 10 ratings isn't gonna cut it. In other words, you're looking for 10 substantive reviews with actual feedback about the quality of your services. You can see down the line, what else is important to searchers? You know, do you have GMB messaging enabled? Do you have your hours set? You know, I hope that as you evaluate your Google My Business listing, you're knocking off the top most important factors, but you're also working through the entirety of the list because you wanna give yourselves the best shot for converting on that interest to your Google My Business listing. So you may be wondering, how do I do that? If you haven't logged in or haven't claimed your listing on Google My Business, here's where you're gonna do it. Just search for Google My Business, sign in or create an account and dive behind the scenes. All of those things that I talked about, inserting an appointment link, updating your hours, updating your website, et cetera, they're gonna happen on this dashboard. Again, this is Google My Business. This is all free for your business. I'm gonna point out just a couple of my favorite features in Google My Business, because they really help me understand you know, how people are finding me and what they're doing next. So I'm just gonna use the signpost listing as an example. And what this graph tells us here, we're seeing how customers search for our business. You know, a lot of people in that green area, they know us, they come seek us out online. So they're coming directly to signpost.com or searching directly for a signpost. However, uh, I think it's interesting to take into account the discovery section. That's the blue section. Some people are looking for marketing software, help with reviews, help with lead management, et cetera. And they land on Signpost as a result. So that would represent for you guys, someone who is looking for a window cleaning or pressure washing in your area. Yeah, if they're searching for that category, searching for that geographical area, land on you, that's how they would quote unquote discover your business. I think the next two are perhaps even more interesting though. You know, how are people finding you? Are they finding you in a search? Are they finding you on maps? Since signposts and likely your business are less location dependent, in other words, you know, my business, we're calling people in your business, you're coming to the homeowner, more likely they're gonna find you on search and less likely they'll find you on maps. But that's interesting insight to know from your Google My Business Insights. There's a chart below that, which I didn't feature, and that talks about what people are doing next. You know, are they clicking to call you? Are they visiting your website? Really interesting to see those trends over time. But if you're curious on where you can read your reviews and how you respond to them, that all happens in the back end of Google My Business as well. So you can see here, like, all of the feedback that we've gotten, Google makes it super easy to hit reply and post a response. Like, super important to acknowledge that people have taken the time to talk about a great job that you've done for them. So take the two seconds to acknowledge their feedback and thank them for their business as well. 
So you may be wondering, okay, that's all fine and good. I get how to establish myself on Google, optimize my Google My Business listing. How do I build those reviews? Well, it all starts with a process. And this is why that process is so important. 70% of consumers will leave a review for a business when asked. Can you believe that? That's huge. I love that opportunity to convert. However, a lot of people fall down on that last part. They're not asking. They're leaving things to chance. So here's your opportunity to build it into the completion of any job that you do for a homeowner. Make sure that you ask, right? What I recommend is incorporating that ask into your existing process. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. And you know, I recommend combining different ways as well. I think that verbal ask is really important. It's personal, you're making eye contact, you're telling the homeowner that reviews are important to you and that you value your, their feedback. However, there's a couple of other things to keep in mind as well. Where do you need the reviews? Determine where they're gonna make the biggest impact in your market. I spent a lot of time on Google because you can't go wrong with Google in any market in the US or in the world. So if I were to put my eggs in one basket here, I would definitely suggest starting with Google. However, um, there are other networks that may be just as important in your market. Facebook, Yelp, Nextdoor. If you haven't checked out Nextdoor, strongly encourage you to create an account and see what's happening. There might be friends and neighbors already talking about your business on Nextdoor. So the moral of the story here is determine what will give you the biggest impact, right? If you're finding that a lot of people already finding you on Google and appreciating what they're reading and, and you think there's an opportunity to grow your presence on Facebook, maybe you want to divert some of your feedback there for a while and, and build a presence there too. However, never lose sight of Google because it's important to keep a consistent flow of reviews on that platform as well. So I talked about the how a little bit in terms of like the personal relationship you have with homeowners, but I think there's another critical component to that as well, which is actually following up with the initial request. So you've made that ask in person, you've closed out the job, they've paid their invoice, what happens next? Now here's where you can leverage tools like email, like text, to follow up with that homeowner and make sure it actually happens. I recommend you create and implement a system that works alongside that personal ask to ensure it gets done. So here's just one quick example of what it looks like with a tool called Signpost. But there's lots of different ways you can do this. You know, Signpost is gonna lead the homeowner right to the Google listing, make it easy for them to write a review with one click. But if that's not the best solution for you, you can simply email links, you could text a link. Whatever tools you have at your disposal that will make it easy for the homeowner to follow through on, I recommend. So you may be in a market that uh, is more text savvy, that is more likely to follow up from a text, I say go for it. Um, if you're already invoicing, if you're already booking appointments through email, that may be more a natural path for you. So something to think about, but the overall goal here really is to communicate that intent in person and then follow up with technology to make sure the homeowner gets it done. So I know a lot of content on reviews, but just some food for thought on how you can make that more systematic as you close out each and every job with the homeowner. 
I want to move into the third section about email marketing and why it's so important. Thought this stat was particularly telling in that the majority of small businesses are relying on email for customer retention. And there's a couple of reasons for that. You know, first and foremost, once you've made an investment and set up a tool like Constant Contact, MailChimp, or like Signpost, um, you've already, your, your investment is already done there in terms of you know, dollars or setup. But number two, even more importantly, the reason this number is so high is because email works. Now, this is a great tool to stay in touch with your customers and stay top of mind when their next project is due or you know, when they have that need again for a window cleaning. There's some of the benefits of email marketing beyond you know, low cost and um, high conversion is that it deliver on engagement they deliver your expertise and they can drive future sales, right? I'm gonna show a few examples that deliver on all of these things. Because I know a lot of people struggle with, great, I know I need an email, but I'm not quite sure what to write. I think that is the hardest part for any local business owner. So I'm gonna start with the high level inspiration. Think about the conversation that you want to have with homeowners. Does your content position you as an expert? Ask yourself that. Are you building trust among homeowners, right? You don't want to always just send out some promotion or discount. You've got a lot of expertise and email is an awesome vehicle to share that. Does it get you into more conversations with prospective customers? right? And does it keep you top of mind when that need arises? Now, all important things to think about as you determine what you're going to write on email. Some more, a few more tips on the actual what to say. Now, we like to call it evergreen content. You might have heard this expression before. So what evergreen means is it's, it's content that's relevant over time right? Positions you and your business as local experts. It's also year round. You know, this can be helpful to homeowners. I've broken it down for you guys into you know, five broad categories here. And I'm going to share some examples on these. Maintenance, super important for any homeowner for whatever they're trying to maintain as part of their home. Frequently asked questions. You might get a lot of questions in the process of um, you know, providing an estimate, et cetera. Cross-selling opportunities. I know a lot of people in the window cleaning, pressure washing business, also clean gutters as just an example, or provide other services, or maybe even do installs. Email is a great vehicle to talk about those additional services. And finally, preparing a home for sale. Lots of movement on the real estate market today and uh, you know, proper care of windows can go a long way to enhancing curb appeal. Let's just take a look at some of these examples. You know, first tips for maintenance, right? You guys all have this expertise on how homeowners can kind of fill in the gaps in between jobs with you. Tell them how they can mitigate these small problems before, before they become more costly, right? That's a win-win on both sides. Also, you know, offer opportunities for homeowners to engage, to ask you questions. Because those often become great ideas for blog posts or shareable content in your email programs later on. It's another example, I kind of grouped FAQs and cross-selling because I thought this example um, combine both really well, but um, this is from a particular window cleaner who also does gutter cleaning as well. Talks about why gutter cleaning is important, what you get with it, and of course positions this business as someone who can help solve that problem. 
I think talking about costs and the rationale behind costs is a good thing to share either on your blog or as part of an email marketing campaign as well. Because uh, not everyone is aware of you know, what goes into you know, staffing a team, equipment, et cetera. And you certainly don't want to race to the bottom when it comes to pricing. So you can lay out the expectations in a great post or great email and say, hey, if you want to work with someone who's going to do a quality job, you know, who has insurance, who has the right tools, like this is about what it's going to cost you. You know, set that expectation up front, be reasonable about it. And that way they have a much clearer understanding of how they need a budget for services like yours. Benefits and upgrades. Always remind homeowners why your services are essential. You could also use this up as an opportunity to discuss benefits they haven't considered. And so this example actually went through about six examples and uh, I, I can't show them all on this screen, but um, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of opportunity to repurpose and um, re reshare content that you may have created previously for another use. I mentioned the potential of installs. I know not everyone does window installs and that can be a whole separate trade altogether, but um, you know, people are thinking about the light of their windows as products and, and you can talk about you know, how to keep them, how to get the most value out of them and Think about the timeline on, on when to upgrade or replace their windows and why. Again, just a few ideas that get people thinking a little more strategically and um, put the right amount of care and investment into their windows. And finally, I mentioned a lot of movement in the market. You guys can play a critical part in helping people get ready to sell their homes, right? How can they get proactive? How can they maximize value? And how can you be the right person to help them get their home to market? Again, great piece of evergreen content um, throughout the year uh, and you know, even into the winter months as you know, people will continue to move around. So all of those, of course, just a few things to keep in mind to keep your customer base engaged year round. Want to touch on one critical piece and that is video. Don't discount the importance of video. Um, I have a roofing and painting example here. I have layered on top a window cleaning example, um, I've seen all sorts of trade videos that um, business owners create that share tips and tricks. And you know, homeowners really leverage those to, you know, again, fill the gaps in between appointments, but also to, of course, get the most value out of their investment too. So if you haven't tried video, strongly suggest you set up a phone try it out. Um, thankfully, video is so easy to produce these days that, um, you know, it's, it's quite simple and efficient to do on your own. You don't have to make a big investment in a video crew. And it, finally, as part of wrapping up the email section, I'm going to discuss a couple metrics just to keep in mind when you're creating and measuring the effectiveness of your email campaigns. What does good like, look like? A few things to consider. Open rates. How many people have opened your email, right? Pretty simple. Average across all industries, just over 20%. If you're doing better than that, that's great. We have an engaged customer base or a great prospect list. Next. Click-through rates. How many people have actually clicked through to your website or engaged with your content in some other way in the email? Expect an average of two and a half percent. It seems low, but that's you know across all industries, of course. If you're punching above this, that is awesome. You've got a great 
list. And finally, unsubscribes. Keep an eye on this because it helps you determine your frequency. Average across industries is a tenth of a percent. If you're seeing higher rates than this, you might be emailing too often. So be mindful of that. You don't want to touch on email or you don't want to overuse email and burn out your list, whether it's prospects or customers. So I have a couple minutes to go and um, I know that I have already run up on time. So I'm happy to take your questions now or feel free to email me. We'll of course be holding the drawing this afternoon for the Amazon gift card. So if you attended this webinar, um, you might be the winner of that gift card. We'll also send the link to this recording as well. So if you'd like to revisit something, um, feel free to check that out as soon as we send the link.